Protect the Green is a zombie golf game where you need to survive as long as you can by defeating incoming zombies with golf balls. The game features a day-night cycle which affects visibility. This allows zombies to sneak up on you in the night. The game has a durability system where golf balls can only be hit several times before breaking. Bunkers will affect your shots and slow down the player, but zombies are immune to its slowing effects. You can rack up serious combos by knocking zombie heads into other zombies, setting off a chain reaction. The theme of the game jam was green. This at first led me down the path of environmental based games, though I did worry there might be lots of these. I also thought about vegetation related games, slime based games, colour schemes and more. When looking up definitions of green, one of the definitions that came up was to do with a golfing green. This had me thinking about 2D golf games, as several months earlier I had picked up Golf Story. I'm not super far into the game, but I am enjoying it. It's got a lot of charm. I didn't want to make a regular golf game, and at this point I was already two weeks into my month-long game jam. I decided to go with a survival game, as I could gradually increase the scope of the game depending on how much progress I was making. I think I subconsciously mixed the golf game with zombies because I'd been re-watching The Walking Dead. I believe I was in The Walking Dead seasons that were part of the governor's arc, and one thing the governor loves to do is hit golf balls at zombies. I planned all my ideas using mind maps. Some of the ideas that were on the mind map that were never implemented were zombie golfers that would use a golf club to hit their own heads towards you, zombie golfers that would ride golf carts at you, and the plan was that you could knock the zombies out of the golf carts and then briefly use them to mow down zombies. Another idea was that successfully putting the golf ball in the hole can activate traps around the map. For example, put a golf ball into a specific hole and it might activate a trap, such as turning on an electric fence for three seconds. One idea that I did add, just in a limited capacity, was the ability to set your golf balls on fire. I had thought of this being used to defeat or do more damage to specific zombies. Perhaps there could be zombies with ice blocks on their heads that you needed to melt with flaming golf balls. I was inspired by Plants vs Zombies for the goofy zombie design, and because I thought about them wearing random items such as cones in Plants vs Zombies. Another idea I had was to have permanent blood decals from the zombie deaths. There's a bit of a joke with the game being titled. Protect the green, I wanted to have the ratio of red-green be calculated at the end of the match, as if it was a game of Splatoon. So it'd say something like, you protected the green, but now it's 53% red. When it came to the development, there were a few things I didn't feel I was ready for. The first of these was art. I originally thought I'd have to do 8 directional art for my animations, and I knew this would have to be at a higher resolution than Hoist. Hoist is generally 16x16, and this game would need to be 32 by 32 if I wanted to show golf clubs and other details. Another issue was how to handle trajectories and collisions based on height when I'm working in 2D. For the most part I ended up solving these issues. When it came to the art I decided to do four directional art and instead allow for 360 degree aiming where the sprite would move to the nearest matching artwork. When it came to getting the trajectory system working I stumbled across a great tutorial that I'll link down below and this got me part of the way with fake height shadows and also decals. I then did some research on Bezier curves and used my start and end points for the shots. This got me to the stage where I could spam lots of blood decals by clicking. I then got it so that the line renderer would come from the golf ball itself and aim at the mouse cursor. Clicking would instantiate a golf ball at the location of your mouse, where it would then bounce. At first I forgot to make the system work in a way that wouldn't give you golf balls that could then spawn golf balls and it created a buggy mess that got laggy very fast. I then had to deal with height based collisions. To do this, I decided to use the golf ball shadow as the trigger for golf ball collisions. When this trigger was activated, it would check the distance between the golf ball and its shadow. I would then put a script on objects that I wanted to be collidable with the golf ball that would state the height of the object. For example, if a zombie was detected as being in the path of the golf ball shadow, it would say, is the golf ball's distance to the shadow less than the height of the zombie? If it is, confirm the collision. At this stage, it simply deleted the zombie. It was at this time I fixed the infinite golf ball issue and also decided to change it from simply clicking with your mouse where you're wanting to aim to having to hold the mouse button to extend the distance out. I made this change to make it more reaction based than a point and click adventure as I felt this would add some challenge and make it feel more like a golf or action game. I also scrapped the Bezier curve I was adding. I had some issues with the Bezier curve every time I tweaked arbitrary values or when the curve had to flip directions relative to the player. The curve would often go off screen when launching far reaching shots due to the increased height the further you go out. I think this change was for the better as it adds an additional skill level to the game, learning how height scales with distance and trying to time your shots with the zombies walking towards that trajectory. 
Next, I added the ability for zombie heads to splatter when a zombie is hit. These use the permanent decal system from the previous tutorial. I soon realised that this system could get laggy further into the game, so I vowed to fix it later. I then worked on zombie spawning and it went... as expected. I then added the ability for zombies heads to knock into each other. I also worked on dynamically creating a single image from all the existing decals and cleaning up the old objects. While this drastically removed lag once the image was created, it would lead to stuttering while the image was being generated. I then tried a different approach, which was to render the blood and decals on a separate camera, and then take a copy of the render image and remove the existing decals. This render image would then be overlaid over the level. This gave me strange transparency and quality issues, and again would cause stuttering. I then scrapped permanent decals and made them fade over time, as I'd wasted way too much time on the system. I added a campfire for future firebase features, and a van as I wanted protection against the player firing golf balls out of the map. The idea of the van was that there would be someone on top of the van, safe from the zombies who would throw golf balls down to you. This meant that if it went out of the map, you would get replenishing golf balls, and it also means that it can force the player to move around. You can see in this footage that they would randomly spawn golf balls out of the campfire at this point in time. I also added a durability system to the golf balls to force the player to think on their feet more as to how they get to the next available golf ball. I added the day-night cycle purely because I wanted to show off the van's lights. I thought it'd be cool to have the van's headlights shine red with blood. This was inspired by the Ash vs Evil Dead series and it looked super cool with night lighting. I added a glow to all the characters and golf ball to help during the night time. I believe around this time I added the sprint and made it so that bunkers would affect player speed and prevent golf balls from bouncing. They would also reduce how far your shots could go. I added a cool menu to show off the day-night cycle and I also thought it'd be interesting to have the default title screen look like you were playing a regular golf game until you hover over play game. I then chose to distort the menu music by changing the pitch when this change occurs and I also added a bloody handprint on hovering. I then added keyboard prompts for the different actions. I think this is one of the first games I've actually bothered to make a tutorial for, in some sense. Notice the heart in the top left that never made it into the game. Next up I added the guy that throws down golf balls to you and some statistics for how the player is doing in the top left. I also added the red coloured fast zombies and a player death animation. I really like how the camera zooms in when the player dies. One detail you might not notice that happens when the player dies is that the zombies change target and start walking towards the guy in the van. I also implemented the ability for golf balls to be set on fire and zombies to set themselves on fire by walking through the campfire or being hit by a golf ball. This can make it easier to track zombies you've already spotted at night. I had a lot of issues with the sorting layer of the van and this is what image appears on top of what image as I wanted the player to be visible in front of the van, but not behind it. My sorting layer calculations were based on the arbitrary height value of each object, and also the Y position of the object. This worked for smaller objects, but as soon as I scaled this to the van, I had very strange overlapping occurring. I ended up splitting the bottom and top of the van into two sprites with different values as the deadline grew closer. The van's collisions were also an issue, as they were the only things the golf balls could collide with that wouldn't destroy the object, and it was static. This meant golf balls could get stuck inside the van. I added my logic to make the golf ball bounce away from the van, but it is temperamental. A YouTube video of someone playing the game was uploaded to Itch, and one of the things they do first is try and kill the guy in the van. And it shows off how buggy those van collisions can be. So, if you play the game, pretend the van doesn't exist. Here's some tidbits about the game. Did you know the players and zombies cast shadows from the campfire and van's headlights? Did you know that golf balls leave marks in the bunkers? The death animation sometimes doesn't fully play and just shows a dead player instead of a zombified one. The guy in the van was meant to have four directional movement, but I got lazy. The zombies heads are actually part of the zombie sprite, and instead a prefab of the current head sprite is instantiated when the head is knocked off. The zombies spawn in at random intervals in each of these four colliders on each side of the map. The combo system gives you approximately one second between zombie kills. I forgot to give the golf flag collisions. Whilst I didn't have time to add anything interesting happening with the golf ball landing in the hole, I could have at least added the golf ball disappearing as an animation instead of having the golf ball levitate. After the game was submitted I got some friends to play the game and noticed on their monitors it's a lot harder to spot the zombies at night. I did add a glow to the zombies but I probably should have looked into sliders that check the brightness level at the start of the game, like most horror games. All sound effects were done by mouth sounds, the gombi... Uh, gom what the fuck is a gombi? All sound effects were done by mouth sounds. The golf ball hit sound is me making a clicking noise with my mouth. Into the mouth. 
nice. The zombie hit noise was made by me biting a grape in half with my mouth open. The guy that throws golf balls can actually kill zombies. While you can't reduce your swing charge, you can press E again to cancel. Expanding the game. If I was to expand the game, I'd first of all make the flag have collisions and something cool happen when getting the golf ball in the hole. This would probably be linked to setting off traps or speeding up golf ball spawns temporarily. I would also make it a little easier to tell where the golf ball shots are going to land. I would look into adding weather, for example, lightning could randomly set zombies on fire at night and light up the whole scene when it strikes. I would add more mechanics to fire, such as the planned ice zombie. I would also add additional courses with different traps and shapes. Overall, I'm really happy with how the game turned out, and especially the trailer. Oh, and the itch page. Those gifts are pretty cool. Thanks for watching.